Welcome. It's California edition. I'm Brad Palmer. It's in Sacramento, and we are joined by George Runner. He is the vice chair of California's Board of Equalization, which deals with taxes and the collection thereof. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to ask you about what's known as Tax Freedom Day. What is Tax Freedom Day, sir? Well, the, the, the uh, Tax Foundation has put together this, this matrix, which right. identifies um, when it is that we as taxpayers right. kind of st stop paying taxes, that would be both local, state, and national, and when our, when our earnings stop paying those taxes, and then we actually then start keeping our money. Okay. And so the day that that takes place, right. they've labeled Tax Freedom Day. You're free of taxes. Nationally, what is that date? Well, nationally, it was this year was April 24th. Of course, it changes depending upon of tax course. issues and tax policies. But on this year, um, you know, people of uh, the average right. across America was April 24th. Some of them, some were earlier, some were later. So were we earlier or later no, here? unfortunately, <laughs> California was not only later, but it's almost one of the latest. Really? Uh, we go to May 3rd. Uh, and, are we uh, the latest? No, there's three other states that are very close to that. Okay. Um, and so we, we, but we're, we are, we certainly one of the later ones. And that means that basically you've got to, in California, work that many more days paying both your state and federal tax. And of course, by that time, in theory, you've already paid your federal tax. Right. The rest of those taxes are basically based upon the additional higher state tax and local tax. Let's talk about the collection of taxes here in California which has been going pretty well lately. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm not trying to make a statement about it, but we look at the revenues coming into the state, and even Governor Brown is projecting less than what's actually coming in. Well, what's, basically, you know, the governor sets, a, sets his budget in January. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, the, the, the governor tr tends to try to make that a pretty conservative right. estimate. Uh, you don't want to overstate there and then say, and then be caught and have a budget then that you start off right. that is underfunded. Um, but basically, it looks like over collection between this year and last year, or over the budget, uh, in this year, this current year, we'll collect about $8 billion more. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And, of course, that's this year. And, of course, as you'd look then, and as the governor is doing his next year's budget, it's an additional $8 billion. So, mm. in theory, as you're looking at next year's budget, that's up to $16 billion. But when we look at next year, what will happen after next year Unless there is a change through the legislature or ballot initiative, part of that additional revenue will end, right. presuming it is additional right. revenue. Right, and that was Prop 30. Prop 30. Because so, remember what happened is uh, we, were in, we were in recession. Uh, as a result of recession, revenues were not coming in. And so the legislature uh, went to Californians and said, hey, look, we need some, we need some money to get through these dark right. times in order to be able to operate a minimum number of services or the services to a minimum mm -hmm. level from our perspective. And so the Californians approved it. There was a series, there was a, right. there was a sales tax adjustment to that and there was an income tax adjustment to that. And the idea was we're gonna, we just need this during this period of time right. and then they'll be able to go away. And so they have a, they have a sunset. Date. Right, which is the end of 2016. Yeah, it's one of them. Blink I, of the eye. Yeah, right. And again, some, one of them I think has a little different timing right. than the, the other one. Right, the income tax one has a seven-year sunset. Right. This has a four-year. Yeah. Governor Brown's been pretty firm. He does not want to see that extended. Well, you know, I think it's difficult, again, for the governor who said, hey, I need this to get through this time. And then when you get through that time, say, oh, Change my mind, I need it now forever. But do you have a sense, though, when that half cent goes away, do we lose $8 billion and so we're kind of back to well, square I think, one? I think, no, no, no. In fact, the, in fact, the total estimate, I believe, of those, of oh. those, those tax increases right. um, were somewhere in the neighborhood of 4 to $5 billion. Okay. So, so, you know, they could all go so away and you still have more money. Okay, okay. Uh, and they don't make the money that you have in the bank right now go away. Right. Uh, or, nor the money that you get in, the, in this upcoming year go right. away. So right. you actually are stockpiling money uh, in, in ready for that. And, and so so and, what should we do? Well, I think with... the first thing we just should do is keep our word. Okay. Uh, the first thing we should do is when we go to Californians and say, hey, look, we're, we need these additional dollars in order to get through these tough times. And that's what takes place. And then you see the economy grow and get back in the swing of things financially. Then you, then you do what you said you were going to do. So let's presume we keep our word. Mm -hmm. And the, the sales tax extension, does, or the sales tax increase is not extended. Mm -hmm. But we still have surplus right. now and after. 
What should we do with that surplus? Well, again, you need to look at the surplus. The surplus right. is the surplus ongoing money uh, related to uh, a base of dollars that you're going to continue to receive. Or is it based upon a spike, for instance, in a, a lot of capital gains right. that might have been done? Or a spike because of Prop 30. Right, that, that's going to go away. And so you don't want to create then, you don't want to spend money. It's just like at your house. Right. You have a spike in your income for whatever reason. You sell something, you get some a bonus of some kind. Mm -hmm. You don't want to now set your spending level based upon that happening every year. Uh, that's what happened to us in the in the right. past, where we started acting like these one-time events were going to keep coming, and then you start spending money that you don't have over commitment, and then you end up cutting dollars. At the same time, we know that when times are good, there are various interest groups that are looking to capitalize on those good times. Uh, we know that K-14 is able to capitalize because of Prop 98, mm -hmm. and there's a discussion about whether that should be rejiggered. But aside from that, I understand some other groups are looking uh, to have new taxes imposed. What's your sense of well, that? Well, I think it's frustrating. I think it should be frustrating. It's frustrating for me, and I think it should be a frustra frustrating for all taxpayers. Mm -hmm. When it is that you see these, are, these revenues going up, and instead of then focusing these revenues on these kinds of projects like affordable housing mm -hmm. or road construction that, that now you could focus these dollars on, instead you see them focused on basically growing the size and the size of government rather than on services that people are looking for I think and then what you see is this effort to create new taxes special taxes um, you know in order to then pay for these other things I want to ask you about one though and I think we talked about this last time and that is Senator Bob Hertzberg's mm -hmm, plan mm -hmm. SB8 right now he is looking at really revolutionizing the way California taxes and as I understand it he wants to kind of flatten out the sales tax and there's a, it's a very complicated formula but decrease the sales tax, but spread it out so it would apply for services. Right. What do you make of that? Well, I, right now, AB8 has nothing to do with lowering taxes. There's nothing in AB8 that actually makes an adjustment downward. Doesn't it decrease no. the sales tax? No, AB8, I think conceptually that's been talked about. Okay. But the only thing in AB8 right now is basically identifying, a good, it hasn't identified, right. but choosing to identify certain services to which sales tax will be added. So right now, the only thing in AB8 right. in, and what has been talked right. about is a $10 billion tax increase. So let's talk philosophically mm -hmm. then. What do you think about the idea that we decrease the sales tax but spread out what is taxable? But the, my, I think the, the question I have and the concern uh -huh. I have about doing that is I don't believe they would ever be able to spread out the, 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 uh -huh. the service tax or this broad right. enough to create enough revenue. Because quite frankly, there's too many folks. When you, start, um, when you start looking at all of the folks who then would say, hey, do it, do it to them, not me. Oh, right, exclude And you start excluding, lawyers, exclude you're going to get a very small amount of people that you're actually going to then extend that service tax to. So I see it not as a revolutionary, I see it as basically, I see it as basically. <laughs> a reason for rebellion? Uh, well, I see it, I see it as, a, as an area that just complicates sales tax now. I want to ask you about the gas tax. There's been a lot of discussion about the fact that the gas tax, when you consider inflation has not increased. Right, that, that's the issue of the exercise. Right. But let me just close on oh, one, please. one other, on the other please. issue. I mean, if you want to do something revolutionary to change tax, I think a service tax could be looked at because I do believe consumption tax is a good idea, a better way to tax, but then do away with the income tax altogether. Huh. Um, now, do any states do that now? Yo, yes. Yeah. Remember, there's about seven or eight states right. that have I no think income you're tax. Right. Yeah, I think so you're there, right. So it's not like this is, is that like, value added. Is that the VAT? Well, the, the, well, no. It'd be not, it's just a ba it, basically okay. you'd be basically not having a sales tax, right. or not having an income, income tax. tax. Different states do it differently. Right. They may have a higher property tax. They may they may do a sales tax on more things, but they be, they basically operate without a, without an income tax. It's fast. And so the idea is, if there's enough money there, why not go ahead and do away with something? And that to me is revolutionary. Come back. I want to talk more. About about that because okay. I think it is a discussion for the future. I yep. think something's going to happen. He okay. is George Runner. He is the vice chair of the Board of Equalization. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento. It's California Edition.